Right, hello everybody, welcome to uh, the round of 16 match between Kislev and Kemri. We start with a rock to the bear, wow. The Kislev are called barely thinking, the bear has just been hit by a rock, incredible. Um, joining me in the booth is Purple Chest, hello. Hello, hello. Right, so yeah, the Kislev, I hated the Kislev, to be honest, in this in this tournament, but they've won a couple of games so far, haven't they? Um, yeah, they have. Um, you know, they've, they've lent into what they know how to do, which is... Get up in your face, uh, move quickly. I mean, they're not great at defending their ball. They're great at taking yours away. Yeah. Um, but certainly two of the, I mean, not in terms of the coaches or the way they've built their teams, but two of the races you would never fancy to get very deep into a chalice. And here we are in the last 16 with Kemri versus Kislev. Yeah. And like, they just... Always treat. They're just unexciting as well. Though. They're just an unexciting team as well, right, aren't they? Yeah. Like, you look at the Kis you look at the Kemri and there's loads of guard there. There's a pommer, tackle, you know, block, there's everything. Wow, he's just double wound. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing on this Kislev team you think, wow, there's the piece that can really change a game. Yeah. It's just all shit. <laughs> I mean, the bear's okay. It's got block uh, and guard. I'd love to see stand firm on it, but, you know, block and guard, if you're taking two skills, are, are pretty decent ones to have on your big guy. Yep. <laughs> And bears are quietly one of the better big guys, um, yeah. as they are basically crocs and gores in a Halloween suit. <laughs> yep. This Kislev but yeah, I mean, these, these Kislev catchers are all right. Um, the linemen are fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But like his blitzers don't have skills on them, do they? How many has he got? He's got one there. Has he only got the one blitzer? Two blitzers. So. Two, okay, yeah. Yeah, I missed that one up front. He's got a block I mean, and a rookie, which is, you know, the, 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 the blitzers are incredible with skills on them, aren't they? Like getting, yeah. you know, Blodge, Stanford. That, that killer and blitzer I quite no. like. I, and even piling on on a a Kislev blitzer of course because of the jump up it's uh, it's quite nice doesn't limit that huge range of movement doesn't mean the diving tackle isn't active that turn but it's it's fine it's, it's not a bad piece if you really want mighty low piling on it's not a bad piece to put it on no, absolutely they've, they've got great options there's this you know they're, they're great annoyance aren't they you can build them great annoyance plays with like blodge step or blodge fans blodge firm and uh, guard or you can go you know tackle palm and uh, the rookie one though i'm not sure a rookie blitzer offers enough in the chalice does it no exactly that's the problem and uh and even the catchers you know the catchers need dodge because they yep. start without it which is crazy and he's got some dodge on them but he hasn't got a lot much more than that does he, he doesn't have the doubles for guard which is what makes them great or stats which makes them a lot better no stats on the lineman which makes them loads better so yeah it's very yeah. very just an ordinary a very ordinary kislev team and I think he's going to be a bit disappointed because this Kemri is quite light and tight. There's, um, I haven't seen the toys, but there's certainly no whiz, is there? There is not a wizard, no. There is, there's just nothing. This is just an even game. <laughs> um, and again, just because the catchers with their move four, their, their nice leaps, can do some wonderful things. You know, perhaps this light, the kids left team, if they'd spun into things where they got those inducements, might really help. But without them, just look very bland. It's tricky, isn't it? This is very tricky. But then the Kemri, you know, uh, as you said, they're nice and solidly built, lots of guard, you know, some hitting power, but again, nothing that makes you excited about them or feels that beyond this game, either of these teams is winning the next one. Yep. I mean, it can happen. In Blood Bowl, anyone can win a game. <laughs> these, are, these are not teams I would be um, putting a lot of money on to go much further in the chalice. Of course, one of them will reach the next round. Yeah, Karen Dante. I think the rookie, uh, rookie blitzer, rather than hitting a catcher, I would have, I would have fancied the 3D on a catcher there. Yeah. I mean, particularly as we said, I'm not sure the rookie blitzer is offering that much to the team, and it does have that stronger AV as well. I guess by by blitzing down here and getting men down there, it makes the stall a bit ha harder. I guess that's his reasoning. Um, you know, if he'd attack the catcher here, there would have been an easier stall for the slightly further yes. down the field. However, yeah, I, I thought so. Um, we're not seeing a stall. Uh, Kislev obviously uh, 
not that brilliant at, uh, def at, at driving and at defending a stall, but really, really aggressive when it comes to coming for your ball. Yeah. And giving himself enough turns here that if, uh, if there's a misfield or any form of kickoff event, he's still got the ease and the time to get there and take that ball away. Yeah, and of course, I mean, kids have a great at scoring touchdowns. Like they're great at like two and three turning, aren't they? Because they've got lead. And so you just can't you just can't screen off against them. Uh, their problem, yeah, as you say, only comes from the, the storm that drives out. So they're they're very happy just to get that three turn. I think, bang it in and try on defense. Oh yes, Basil. Thank you very much. You reminded me of that. Yes. So in the Kemri Mirror, uh, which Jim I think was a bit distracted by other events during, uh, this Kemri team did have a, a very very nice blitz ra. Uh, no, sorry, throw ra that was. Um, there was plus agility uh, and would blodge, uh, but it took a minus agility last game, so uh, it's sitting this one out. Oh, yes, yeah, of course. I do vaguely remember that game, yeah. <laughs> what happened on the field was uh, of a minor concern. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh really, uh, Gadene? This is. Rip them then. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's. I mean, I. Yeah, I knew that, which is why I think Gadene's um, an automatic for the semi-final. I don't see either of these teams troubling those elves at all. No. I mean, I, I think the most trouble will probably be finding a, a slot to play the game in. <laughs> yep. It's pro probably the toughest thing Nick faces in the next round. <laughs> oh, dear me. Brutal. Um. Oh, you're right, Otek. I shouldn't mention anything else that ever happens anywhere, ever. <laughs> Only what's happening right in front of us. Yeah, I'll try and upload in the right order so that if people are watching them in the order, then it's, it's okay. I mean, they can dice them, right, Vogue? They can just dice them. They can just remove... The turn one, they can remove three or four elves. And then they can get the guard, you know, a guarded, guarded up cage. Keep guard all around it, unlike Mankis, and uh, and then you know remove more elves, and then a tiny double one, and then remove up more elves, and then <laughs> more double ones, then remove more elves, and then there you go, easy win. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I yeah, if anything, the other way round, I would, if I had to pick one of these two teams to face Gadenix elves, I'd do something else that afternoon. But if if I really had to, <laughs> I'd. Uh, I'd probably take the Camry. I just think with the amount of block guard and some mighty blow, I've, there's some things I think I could do against the elves, but the kids left, I just think they're going to get slaughtered and run past and have their ball taken away pretty much at will. Yeah, that's the thing. They've got the guard guard for the cage, haven't they? They've got it in. They can, as you love to say, they can monster them a bit, can't they, with all that strength five? and guard Yeah, and yeah I, think, I think they can. And crucially, they've got—they've just got a better dicing chance, haven't they? Right? They could do the old try technique of just not bothering to defend and fouling for sixteen to uh, well eight turns. Sorry, just yeah, foul for yeah. eight turns in the first half. Massive gang fouls, pomming, gang fouling. You know that gives them an, that gives them an out. Yeah, that could absolutely be relevant. Of course, by scoring quickly here, the Kislev have denied them the air for just just gang foul for eight turns uh, on your defensive drive technique. So, and he's got to protect the ball, so this is, you know, scoring quickly is uh, leaning into team preservation for the Kislev here as well. Yeah, no, uh, yeah, definitely. It's, um, I mean, the kid, also, it's given the Kemri that tantalising chance of, uh, of driving home this half for a, a nice 2-1 grind, using all of that guard to keep the ball safe, but, it, it, yeah, as you say, it does mean that they're going to have to prioritise positioning if they want to do that, and moving that ball forwards whilst keeping it safe, and that probably means a lot less hitting and a lot less aggression towards the Kislev. Um, I thought scoring at that time was the was the right thing for the Kislev to do. Yeah, I was I was baffled there to be honest. I was saying about this fouling, and I was looking around at the Skellington's going, "Where is the DP?" But he's on the bench. <laughs> 
He's on the bench. Well, I mean, at, at this point, yeah, I, I don't hate that. I think you need to just keep driving forwards whilst it looks possible this half. And then next half, you'll have some more turns, possibly, um, you know, to, to do those fouls as well as keeping the ball safe. I think it, in a five-turn drive, that's that's a lot harder to do for a team as slow and lacking agility as Kisner. I did the game, we get the LOS blocks, foul and concede. Yeah, good shot. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> yeah, this is tricky, isn't it? By the old elf wall here. Elf screen, elf wall, whatever you want to call it. Um, it's tricky for the Camrys to break through, isn't it? They're just going to have to blitz in and, and base up with their strength fives and mash forward as best they can, but they don't really have, like, you know, even a single dodge is going to be tricky for them, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, it's one of the big problems for Kislev is, that, is they really do at times have to play like elves whilst lacking the basic agility to do so. And unlike, say, for example, Amazons, about superficially people might say the same, you know, Amazons can afford a lot more base, base, base. Um, because unless you're facing something with loads of tackle, um, you know, that's still going to be uh, very successful a lot of the time, a, a rest movement. Yeah, this is the thing, you know, lots of people say about, like, Kemri picking up the ball in the rain and stuff, but what I find in my limited experience with Kemri is, is the problem is the dodging, you know, because if people can just make you dodge, you're really, really bad at it. Yeah. <laughs> and it's just kind of... If you, if you players survive, it's pretty easy to get in the way of the, of the Kemri and just try and make them make a dodge. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't hate. I mean, with the dwarfs, I don't hate. You know, an occasional four plus at the end of the turn that I usually don't care if it works or not, um, or a four plus with re-roll at the very start to get a ball hit, for example. But it's, it's not a situation you want to be in. And at least I've got some AG three pieces that if everything is based, I can do a one in nine if I really need to change the situation. Uh, it doesn't have to be that to uh, that one in four fail. With Kemri, that's the best you're going to look at. Yeah. The absolute dream scenario is, <laughs> and, and you know, obviously any minuses, it just becomes a nightmare. There's no guard at all, is there, on this Kemri, uh, Kislev team? No. So, very hard for the bear to hit Tomb Guardians. I mean, the bear is the guard on, it, on that team. And against other teams, that's great. You can, uh, you can use it like a tree, you know, push it down their throat, use it as a, as a fulcrum around which you do your hitting using its guard uh, as your assist and then running out backwards afterwards into a good shape but against something as strong as the Camry that's very very hard to do yeah yeah sorry yeah there's no there's, there's, there's guard on the back but I knew what I meant yeah 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 I mean guard you can actually put somewhere <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's the one hello Dave <laughs> Okay, we only have two turns plus another turn. Thanks, J5. <laughs> never, you'll never forget that, will you, J5? <laughs> I, I don't think it's got old yet, J5. There's at least another couple of the whole of this chalice. I think that's going to be relevant. And then we'll then we'll see if it's got boring. <laughs> oh, he's basing the bear. I don't like basing the bear. I'm not sure I like this. I mean, if you're going to do it really do it as he is but it's not what I would be choosing I, is he just tired of facing an elf wall a few lines away and so he wants to get up into its face yeah. um, I mean it gains him a lot of space if this works I mean I'm all for getting in their faces but I would uh, I'd be coming into their face coming on their face with a no that's not okay I can't. Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> With the, uh, you know, the Tomb Guardians, uh, just one Tomb Guardian on both of these takes them both out, doesn't it? Uh, I, don't, I don't know, I don't know about this. Oh dear. <laughs> Over the kids left not being sucked in by it. Uh, instead, they're <laughs> just hitting a. <laughs> utterly irrelevant skeleton out on outside of the cage area and they're again just trying to drop back into a nice elf wall shape yeah they're not being and sucked in they're, three being pluses. Su <laughs> they're not being sucked in they're being sucked off <laughs> sorry well now they've got to try and get themselves off um, having been refused to be sucked in <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Uh, and sure enough, that was a 2 plus fail there that uh, took the reroll. Yep, tackle being relevant. And there's a leap fail. Love to see that. I love to see a kids level leap fail, I do. And now, uh, there's this side is a little bit weak. He could try to push through this side, couldn't he? Needs the bear down and gets it. Oof. I don't think he's doing it though, Jim, or else that should probably have been a follow-up. So, uh, yeah, I would have liked to follow up there. Yeah, surely he has to. That's the only place to go. I mean, I think the follow-up there is stronger because otherwise you still need a piece to keep that bear down. And yeah. I think the two Guardian could have done that. I don't know why we didn't. Well, maybe you can, like, you know, put another guy around there and then leave the Tomb Guardian out as a screen with another Tomb Guardian in contact with this Rackle guy. You know, this, this Yeah, absolutely. I just, the first one that hit, I don't see what it's screening there. It's it's nowhere near where the ball's going to be. It's not helping with the Kislev players. He's already closed the back door to the cage, so it's not stopping the Kislev coming around the back. Yeah. I, I guess with the piece two in front of it, it's a, a leap screen. Yeah. You can't get near enough from the side to leap in, so that's probably in its favour. But I, I mean, he's now used another Tomb Guardian to do exactly the same thing he could have done for free. Yeah. Whereas that could have been rammed up into somebody's face, forcing another three plus. Oh, uh, could have rammed it down his throat. Yeah, yeah, I, I do love doing that. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I, I find mostly people don't want me ramming it down their throat, Jim. Yeah, that's the that's the sad part, isn't it? But... <laughs> oh dear me! <laughs> the country way is the best way. Glorious, isn't it? He's blitzed already. What the? F uh, who did he blitz? Okay, I guess he's doing this almost double screen. Yeah, which is it's again, it's fine, isn't it? It's it's forcing those Camry to dodge to get anywhere. I I think that's. He's managed to make those rerolls um, get him back into good position. He's still got one in hand, and he's. Um, I, I really don't see a good route through for the Camry here. But it's only one dodge, isn't it? That's the thing. They're so deep. It's only the one dodge. If this had been it is only right, the yeah. field, brilliant defense. But it's not and further of course, up the field. You know, if you can pop a reroll in, even a six is. Uh, it's about a one in three shot. No, not actual maths. <laughs> I, I'm confused. That's. He's crazy. Blitzed. That's he blitzed crazy. this guy. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, all right, he's chipped a all right Kislev piece, but he's, they don't have any really good ones. He's handing off to the he's handing off to the Tomb Guardian and scoring on him. Right? Okay. Which is a five plus then two two then two GFIs instead of just making the five plus dodge. Yeah. I think it was a lot easier to just blitz this guy and do a 5 plus dodge than adding yeah, two gear size. Although the 5 plus has worked, so what do we know, Jim? <laughs> yep. And he's still got the reroll for those two go for it. No tripwire in its trolls. Beautiful, uh, beautiful drive there. Lovely two guardians. Glorious. The unexpected Tomb Guardian switch play. Yeah. I mean, you risk your, you risk your Tomb Guardian, though, don't you, Basil? But yeah, that's that's fair. Yeah, I mean, they've AV9. They can take a hit from the grass normally. Like Skuro, they're used to it. Ah, <laughs> oh, did you see what I did there with the grass pump? Yeah, it's kind of very good. <laughs> right, so here we go. This is, I mean, a successful drive there from Binkit. And now G Car is uh, is up against it, isn't he? But he's got a full team still. Got all of his brilliant players that are you know got one skill or two. <laughs> and, uh, 
You know, he hasn't taken the attrition, which which is the big fear against uh, Camry a lot yeah. of the time, isn't it? Um, but yeah, that's the thing. That's the Kislev way, isn't it? Is, is bang it in early and hope to get turnovers, and he hasn't got the turnovers. He played that very conservatively, in fact, didn't he? He was just screening. He didn't go for any kind of yeah. ball at all. I mean, all. The, the plan seemed to be bang it in early, and then we'll elf screen. And as I said, elf screening... I mean, he actually, I thought, was fairly lucky in that he managed to get his pieces back and into elf screens reasonably untroubled. Um, and did force the Kislev, as you said, into a, a 5 plus dodge, as you or I would have seen it, but a 5 plus, 2 plus, 2 plus, as uh, the Kislev tried to see it, chose to see it. Yeah. And that it did now he's in a tough position. He, I'm not sure he can just do a eight turns of elf walling here. I think he has got to try and find a way of coming for this ball. Yeah. And he's, put the, he's fielded the dirty player this time. He's remembered how much he loves DP. So it's all right. Good morning, quality grips. Uh, and just quietly, whilst we're in a, a little moment here with not a lot happening, um, well done to chat for not engaging too much with Debo Williams. Uh, and his obvious and needy braving for attention. <laughs> yep. I might as well just ban him in. <laughs> Actually. Yeah, I, I, yeah. Not that you mention it. Save us all some time. <laughs> yeah, I'll preemptively ban him. I mean, I, I feel a bit sorry for him. I think he's probably just a, a 14 year old sat at home alone. We can ask Dimi, seeing he's, he's seen some evidence of, <laughs> of his appearance. <laughs> I, I, I think we should just ignore it and move on, Jim. <laughs> let's, let's talk to people that, that you know want to have some fun and some banter without just being yes butter dicks. <laughs> yep. Defend that a little bit, yeah, Stephen. Yeah, doesn't matter. As PC says, best to just ignore. Right, so is he going to go for this Fender here, or is he going to finally hit a Tomb Guardian? He's, yeah, this is oh, thing. he is. I like that. Yeah. This team urgently needs splitting in half, and uh, he certainly has that opportunity. And fantastically, he is advancing afterwards. I, I worried there that he was going to take that hit and then pull back again, but he's not. He's trying to split the kids, the Kemri in half. That's, I think, absolutely the right thing to do here. He does need to get a more active plan this half. Yeah. Balls to the wall. And hence we are we are fully coming for it here, and I really like that. I think if you're going to commit, you you commit, you throw everything at it. He's coming Excellent. hard. Yeah, he's uh, isolating the uh, the tomb guardian that uh, dropped down on the line of scrimmage. He's isolating the other one over the far side. That's two of those strength five pieces out of uh, imminent relevance. Oh, he fails his three plus leap though. And well, you love to see it, don't you, Jim? I, I lo honestly, I genuinely love to see three plus leap fails. Um, yeah, me too. <laughs> because when they're, when they're against you, they just never do, do they? <laughs> they make seven of those in a row, and then when you say that's quite lucky, they go, they're only three pluses. <laughs> yes, but you've done seven of them. <laughs> It'll be okay if you failed any. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I, uh, I got criticised, yeah. actually, in one of the really casts for like being overly negative about Kislev, so... Try not to be this one. <laughs> I will try not to be, but yeah, it's, that's what it is. I guess it's just being burned too many times by the three plus leaps, right? I think that's what it was. It's, but I mean, that, that is their game plan, you know. Yeah. If those all work, then it, it's very, very hard to stop doing what they want. Which is why it isn't two pluses. That's why you know, it's been designed and they were designed, so that there are a lot of fails inherent in what they do. So if they don't come, it is quite easy to feel that's uh, that's the dice not doing you favours. Yeah. But then that's Blood Bowl. You've, you've got to have a plan for when they don't. And the Kemri did, which was handing off to a Tomb Guardian. <laughs> well, it, it worked. I mean, it, it was a plan. I still thought the 5 plus dodge in like you, Jim, was, was better. You know, missing those two 2 pluses. But um, it, it certainly was a plan. And it, it, it worked. Yeah. So it was a good one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's kind of fair, right? He's only got the one. He's only got the one thrower. I, I kind of feel like if you don't score, though, you just lose almost. So there is that aspect of it, isn't there? Um, and also, like the thrower isn't that good. I don't think there's any strip on the uh, Kislev team. So. Which 
Not that I can see. There's not. A I mean, perhaps it started the chalice with more wrestle and strip, but I would want more wrestle and strip. It's 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 what you urgently need as Kislev. Uh, you need to work. You need rackle. Oh, he gets the uphill. Wow, that's spicy. Unbelievable, Jeff. That, oh my God, what a bounce! <laughs> wow. There you go. First half, he, he sat back and elf screened. This half, he's gone in, and yep. what a reward. Yeah. Well, I mean, like elves, because, I mean, we can grumble about the fact that worked on the first opportunity, but if you can afford to throw people at doing that four turns out of the eight in the drive, the odds of it working the once you need are not bad. Absolutely. Um, yeah. The fact that it worked the first time for him, you know, that's going to happen sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, or if you're flicky flack, obviously every single game. Uh, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> Should have been carrying on a Tomb Guardian. <laughs> I mean, well, certainly he could have been carrying on the uh, on a Blitzra, right? Like the Blitzra makes a decent carrier with a uh, block. Like the, this throw rod is completely defenseless. So like all the, it gave him obviously the, the better chance of picking up the ball. Um, without using a reroll, but once he's yep. got the ball in hand, like that's why I didn't think it was that bad risking the throw off the skull because once you've got the ball in hand, your blitz is basically better because he's got block. Um, yes, and if you're not facing strip ball, um, and also less chance to be removed if it's hit because it has the thick skull as well. It's yeah. you know, two little advantages. They're not huge advantages, but in these little ones and two percent gains, is, is you know, often that's how we build success. Okay, my yeah, extra armor. Isn't it extra armor? They, they neither get thick skull. The position. Oh, sorry, yeah, get extra thick armor. Skull, yeah, yeah. But yeah, it always gets. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, Baza, absolutely. Uh, you know, I I have got used to kids level. Also because I've got a a physical tabletop team that are Cossacks. Mm -hmm. uh, which I can use for slan on tabletop, or for Norse, or for human. Um, so for a while I've been quite used to slan and Kislev being interchangeable in my head. Um, and to come just to the point earlier from Kinroth, um, yeah, I mean, I, I wasn't a fan. I think if you're going to set the rules that we want diversity in the cup, not just the top 64 teams on the ladder, then you absolutely need to try really hard to make sure you're representing all the teams and giving those tickets out, getting people in, persuading them to come. Even with terrible teams, because with inducements and reasonable dice, anybody can win a game of Blood Bowl. Yeah. Uh, and just to answer the little second point, uh, the plan for the dice failing is blaming the dice. Uh, I don't want to go full Dionysian on you. There are dice in Blood Bowl. I've got a huge bag of them. And they are relevant in every single game. But... They're not the thing you can control. That's what Dio means by there are no dice. I mean, there are obviously dice. They're just not something within your power to change. So you need to have plans for if they're not running your way. Uh, and if they're so not running your way, there's nothing you can do. Then you just need to accept that. Because a game like this, it, that is going to happen sometimes to the best coaches. A fair amount of the time, isn't it? I mean, that's the yeah, thing. Yeah. The, the best coaches in the world top out at 80% win rate in, against I've always field, said, which is wild. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, that's pretty much the quote I always use, Jim. It's, um, I always say, you know, the best coaches on a hot run get an 80% win rate, so they lose one game in five. Um, so, I find it confusing when people expect that, you know, every three plus they make will work, or <laughs> every two plus dodge will work. It won't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but if you believe you're, you know, getting reasonable at the playing of Blood Bowl, you've just got to console yourself that fails will come, but that you're hopefully slightly better able to process them and deal with them and counteract them than your opponent will be. <laughs> yeah, Gavinik, yeah, you've got, you've got an advantage in that regard, certainly. <laughs> Yes, absolutely. Uh, I mean, it is definitely the easy way to play the Gdanic Blood Bowl way, where you can just choose outcomes uh, based on what you wanted them to be, and uh, you know, hack the client so that you get all the skill ups you need and all of the uh, stats. <laughs> yeah. 
Did he four plus three plus dodge instead of leaping? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I suppose the dodge inbuilt reroll um, if he wanted it for later in the turn, but I don't see that he did. And of course, one of the things Kemri really struggled to do is to be responsive. You know, yeah. Pressuring the stall takes a long time to even get into place. <laughs> and then it's really, really hard to make sure it isn't just uh, ignorable as you swap sides to the other side of the pitch. Yep. Yeah, this is rough for the Camry. Very rough. But, you know, I didn't really like that he was pushed in so hard. And, you know, next to the bear, there was, there was a chance of the uphill push into the bear. It wasn't there. It was, yep. it was a bit messy that turn. Um, as much oh, as the a drive. Bit lucky. He, yeah, he left himself. I, I mean, I know that that wrestle taking his Tomb Guardian down sort of destroyed his positional um, plan on the first turn, but the, the positional plan wasn't that hot anyway. Mm. Knowing that the kids they've had to come for it. Yeah, I'd have, I'd have wanted a tighter, more responsive first turn. Yeah, and he, he, you know, the, the first half he only had six turns to drive. This time he had eight, he had the full eight to drive, so he, he was in no rush whatsoever, he could have taken it a lot safer. And also, yeah. know, again, as you say, knowing that G-Cal has to come for it, right, he can't just sit in L3 and there's less pressure on him busting forward in, in that regard as well. So there's two factors um, leading him to being a bit more patient. Well, there you go. This is uh, looking tricky now, isn't it, for the Kislev? Uh, for the Kemri. God. The only problem is saying Kislev instead of Kemri all the time. <laughs> That's, it's, it not, it's not a problem not saying Slan. It's a problem is just saying Kislev and Kemri. Yuck. As you said, teams, teams, as chat said, teams we don't see in the chalice enough that we haven't practiced those words. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's nice that we've got the chat trained now that we don't need to do the double entendres or sexual innuendos. They just do them for us. <laughs> oh god, J5. <laughs> yeah, oh dear me. Oh my god. Oh my god, this is horrible. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> god, this is no I don't think I don't think it is a good thing actually, PC. <laughs> Oh, this is a nice chain, though, isn't it? Get an extra hit. Um, can't YouTube allow the video on and just ban all of your chat? So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, We've made our own bed. We are hoist by our own petard. Your childish sense of humour is a blend to this situation. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Too but huge we're only trying to live our lives and have fun. We mean no offence to anyone. Yep. Right now, this is this is more the sort of line of scrimmage we wanted to see, isn't it? Getting some more aggression up there, but a little more safety-minded, a much better defensive position, much less isolation, much more. Oh no, that one's going wandering off. No, nope. I was going to say much more coordination between where the pieces are and where he's leaving gaps. Okay, if we're basing the bear, then the the big gaping hole in the middle uh, and the one isolated Tomb Guardian is is less bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I still don't like it. I much prefer just keeping the. the yeah, tomb that exactly. Guardian the way that yeah, Tomb Guardian yeah. was, I thought was stronger than where it is now. Yeah. Oh, he's oh why are we doing this? Oh, he's got to get in range. He's just literally got. To oh yeah, no, it's it's shortness of turns. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, and probably this turn then better than next because there is some defense around it. Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right. Whew. But I mean, uh, compare this to how that last drive started. Look at the tightness of that pack around the ball. You know, the relevance of the Tomb Guardian over on the right. It's only the one on the left that's a little bit abandoned, and that did a job. You know, it, it, it did some line of scrimmage hitting. Yeah. The bear marked up so that it can't come aggressively towards the ball. It, it, it's a much better shape. Yeah, that's a good point, Bazar. I'd like to have seen a bit, little bit more central. Oh, the bear. But then this gives him a... Oh, no, he's, he's on the line, isn't he? he can, maybe he could chain people out. Oh, okay, now he's tightened up completely. Yeah, I actually felt it was a feint up the sideline. I thought 
the, the, the he would come pushing back into the middle this turn, and I, I think he's still going to. Uh, and I think Kislev realized that as well and decided they they weren't falling for it. They didn't need to super reinforce the edge. They could just uh, put an elf wall up that had to include the middle. In fact, I might have kept the bear more central. Yes, I thought the bear moving more up the side was a little bit of a mistake, possibly. Is this Blitzrar in range? Looks like it. Just. Just in range, the Blitzrar. And now the uh, the seemingly irrelevant Toon Guardian can also get in range. We do know he loves a, a Toon Guardian scoring threat, which it now officially <laughs> is. Fantastic. <laughs> oh man, imagine if he gets the double Toon Guardian score. <laughs> that would be outrageous. I don't like moving these guys before moving the ball, to be honest, but you've got to, haven't you? Like, it's not an option. You, you, yeah, you've got to. They, they've got to go there, and it's got to work. Yeah, because he has to stand here, doesn't he? Yeah. I mean, you, you, you might even be spicy and push it one space forwards from there. Yeah, yeah tempting them in because the, you know there's three guards around it. Yeah, but so what I meant was this is the square they all had to run through to get there, didn't they? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so. yeah. I don't hate that because now he can't be pushed out of range, uh, and there is enough guard around that if they really want to come for it with a wrestle piece, you're just going to have to live with it yeah. because Kislev can come with a wrestle piece anytime they want anyway. At least you can make it negative dice. Oh, he's not listening. Do you know what? He could have pushed him out. He could have blitzed with the bear. Um, it was two go for it with the bear, but I didn't. If, if you got yourself some nice defensive lines back first, and there were some Kislev that are moving now that could have done exactly the moves they're doing, and then the bear could have come for a you know two die on two go for it. Yeah, that was looking pretty good, wasn't it? And then it, you know even if you push, you've got a bear in the middle of all the ki of the Camry, and that <laughs> that causes its own problems. Yeah. Or just make every three plus. And, uh, <laughs> that's, that's fine too. Oh, he's put sticking in a reroll here. He has got to get to overtime, hasn't he? That's uh, best case scenario for him. Now. No, it's not. He's two one up. No, he's two one up. If he stops here, it's it's done. Yeah, it's two one is the best. Is the oh god, overtime is the best case scenario for the Kislev. Yeah, the Kemri. Kemri, oh fuck. Ah, why did they both start with K? <laughs> Thank you for the red Martin scores easy as my brain dissolves live on air. <laughs> After right, Jimmy, I'm here to help. I think my great fear is the wrestling. I, I, you know, where there's only help. <laughs> yeah. How much oh. help one get from help? I don't know. How does he score right. here? Ah, uh, blitz the. But it's the catcher. Catcher and, and then a four plus dodge. Yeah. That's what I'd be trying. But it, it's as you say, Jimmy, the four plus is what kills you here, isn't it? Not the not the blitz. Yeah. Gets the move, which is all he needs. Fails the dodge. Throws in that reroll. Fifty percent hit. He's got it. Makes it. And he gets the And he takes it or T. Oh baby. I'll be back momentarily. Please. Just call him Slam. Uh, <laughs> jumpers and balls. <laughs> wow. So he still had to, like, he still struggled to score a little bit there, despite uh, removing or making all those removals. Um, and now the kids are down to nine players. That's not terrible, is it? Nine players. They're not down catchers. They've got three re-rolls. Um, they might even have ten as well, because they've got another guy to come back before overtime. They could score a one turn, technically, but uh, I don't think they will. So, yeah, they've got nine or ten guys for overtime, and they haven't won the toss. I thought it was weird that we didn't see the toss animation, because I didn't work out what had happened. So, yeah, they haven't won the toss yet. Because <laughs> that. Also, the Kemri out of rerolls. So even if the Kemri win the toss, it's going to be tricky with zero versus three. Isn't it? I mean, it's not just Kekwadi; it's also just having those rerolls to defend with, isn't it? Or score with. So yeah, this is going to be real tough for Binkit, even if he wins the toss here. Oh. 
quick snap. Maybe he could go for one. I don't know, it's hard, isn't it? It's hard against the, the Tomb Guardian LOS. <laughs> Two reserves for the Camry. Okay, so now is a big one. Who wins the coin toss? Allez, on y retourne, les gars. C'est reparti pour le massacre. Oof, the kids love win. Well, there you go. I thought it was going to be a struggle for Kemri even if they won the toss, but now, with 10 men and not losing any good players, I mean, a block a block blitzer might as well be a rookie lineman. So then they're not down quality players. They've got their catchers. And Kislev, yeah, Kislev, yeah, should be a relatively easy two or three turn score. The move seven does hamper them a little bit on the two turns, but it's it's just so, it's so hard to defend against Kislev, isn't it? So hard with a di diving catch as well makes them pseudo agility five for catching. And I'm back. Hello. Right, so nothing on the turn sixteen of note, or. No, Did nothing, anything happen? Nothing right. happened. Uh, but Kislev have won the toss to receive an overtime and they got the kill back. So it is 10 right. versus 11. <laughs> Ooh. Um, I think this is a very good position for the Kislev then, isn't it? Incredible, yeah. By which, of course, I could mean either team. But. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, the perfect D changes that a little. I'd, uh, I'd be. Tempted to go a little bit all men's here and put some a couple of Tomb Guardians on those ones on the line of scrimmage. Keep those honest. Absolutely, yeah. Get Tomb Guardians in the LOS. Got it. Halloween Army. Very interesting. He's trying to lock the whole position down with just the one Tomb Guardian. I think that's a little optimistic. Very optimistic. I mean, like I said, I think two, one either side, could have locked those four down made the Blair have to blitz there and then uh, and if I'd, I'd have had them just either side of where that Tomb Guardian is standing so that if the Blair comes up the middle it's, it's still not easy and left me uh, yeah two Tomb Guardians to, to tie down the wings and then all of my skeletons to be slightly more responsive and a bit less in danger but it's still it's still a nice solid position it's still going to make the Kislev turn a lot harder this won't yeah, fail. Easy, I'm on the rig. Boop, boop, boop. No, but then, I mean, as Kislev, it's not like elves. My plan wouldn't have been busting through this turn. Um, you know, stabilize, wait for them to overcommit somewhere because they're so unresponsive. And then look for a space somewhere else. Or fill the dice roll, of course. The, uh, the, the, uh, Kemri are without rerolls, so yep. anything can, you know, their, their entire defensive formation can collapse on any given turn. <laughs> Kislev not long on rerolls, but you know if you only got one, then you do want to try and shorten that drive and get in as soon as possible. They didn't like that. <laughs> no. I didn't see that the bear was going to be the most important piece to this. Mm. I'd have been hitting one of the catches as we said all along. Yeah. Yeah, the, the the catches, the playmakers aren't there. Like it's they're the they're the threats. And he probably should have been making a more concerted effort to try and hit them. But then it was hard because he's been on that offense all, all game, hasn't he? <laughs> oh, <gee -fi. laughs> So yeah, he's just gonna go 
go off isolated to him, Guardian. That, that's good, isn't it? And of course, when push comes to shove, you can just these three can just all leap over and make a sideline cage easily, whenever they want. <laughs> what the hell? I mean, they certainly might have done. Oh, there's the bonehead. This is looking pretty ropey for the kids, they've actually. Oh, there's a leap. I'm not sure how good one guy alone is. Uh, waiting to get hit by Tackle Palm. I think that's about the worst thing he could have done there. And yep, sure enough, the Tackle Palm hit is coming in instantly, not three dice. But he doesn't need three dice. He's got a pile here, I think. No, he doesn't. I like piling. I know it's terrible to put your tackler down. But as long as you reinforce, like, down the field and over the side, you know, you can get away with piling on. Like, the opportunity to take out this catcher is incredible. He has got the other tackler as well. Like, to cover. I guess you could foul him. Okay, fouling him is, is maybe better. Yeah, I think there was one earlier. Uh, hold on. One earlier. He gets wrestled, old baby. I mean, it's tough for the Camry right because they've got no rerolls, so they have got to try and play super safe. But this wrestler is doing a good job, isn't he? Getting punched by Tomb Guardians. This looks pretty open over the other side. He's not going to go down there, though. He's blitzing the tackle here. Is he going to push? Oh, he's just sidelining and caging. This is wild, isn't he? His scoring threat remains a scoring threat and an incredibly dangerous one as well. That's kind of why I like I like not putting this tackle of Blitzable, but I like piling on and keeping the tackle safe, to be honest. But there you go. <laughs> yeah, game of vision. Yeah, that's that. That is, you know, I did get I did get criticised that on the for for that on the tubes. So I'm trying not to, uh, you know, get uh, get triggered by it. But you know, why? What? Where's where's it? What's, oh, he's chaining in the tomb guardian. Lovely. Lovely play. Gets a removal on the way, and it's three dice on the ball. No re-rolls. He gets the pow. It's in a tackle zone. I think you've got to go for it. Right? You've got to go for the pickup. I think you go for the pickup before a blockless block. Aren't miss going mad there with that? No doubt. I also like this guy making it. No, he's only with fives. Now. Two GFIs. I wouldn't have hit. Oh, he doesn't even try it for the pickup. <gasps> ooh, ooh. Do I not like that? I think you had to go for the pickup there. You know, he's got your hands. I guess you could get surf maybe, but he's got guard. I don't know. It just seems too. Just seems too exposed here with edge falls around the place. Peepers. Yep. Yep. There you go. He's rolled some two pluses. And he scored. I think he had to go for the pickup there. 
be close. Because these guys... <laughs> Ah, you spent about a minute thinking if you should pick up or not. That makes sense, could it? Yeah. yeah, I can imagine it being a nuts game live. Yeah, yeah, it's a bit, it's a bit of a shame that you don't get like that the the ebbs and flows and drama as much do you on the replays. Um, it's it's a lot drier, isn't it, on replays? There were threes with with dodge. Yeah. Uh, you also don't get three hour games exactly. Yeah, so it's it's it's. You got to take the rough with the smooth, haven't you? But yeah, that was. I mean, it was. I can imagine it would be absolutely crazy. Both scores on turn eight for the for the uh, Kemry were like close things, weren't they? And, uh, yeah, I mean, nicely done given the options he had. But uh, yeah, sorry, I uh, got uh, whisked away by my brother calling there. Not a problem. Leaps. Look at seventy-seven percent leaps. That you love to see that, don't you? Uh, Kids left because a lot of them were three pluses. Yeah, I mean, I suppose that's about on point. Um, you know, the two plus leaps with catchers, the three plus leaps with um, everyone else. <laughs> everyone else, yes, the blitzers and linemen. Uh, the bear, of course, not a leap. <laughs> nope. So I suppose seventy percent is, is slightly over what he would have hoped for. That's that's as if the catchers have been leaping all the time, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, you know, Chica, uh, I think, yeah, definitely played. He played a bit, a bit weird the first half, right? He was very standoffish in the first half, but then maybe he was wary of like you know going in too hard and losing players. So yeah. he, you know he just played it cautiously. That's totally fair, isn't it? Then when he had to play a bit more aggressively, he did. And then yeah, Binker did well to get back, tie it up, and then but it did cost him all his re rolls. And then once G Car won the coin toss, it was that uh, always looked very very difficult to stop them. Yeah, very bleak. Uh -huh. I mean, I, I didn't think any of the coaching was truly awful. I, I, I quite liked the, um, as you say, the plan from the Kislev I thought was a tiny bit negative in the first half, but I sort of understood it. Um, I thought he was much, much better with that offensive you know, defense in the second half that, that got him the turnover he needed. Yeah. I thought the Camry did, did fine. I, I still think the 5 plus dodge in was better than the 5 plus 2 plus 2 plus, but it's not a million miles different. It's... Yeah. It was okay that plan. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't it wasn't terrible, was it? It was no. well played by both sides, I would say. Um, so congratulations, G Car, commiserations, Binkit. Thank you very much, PC, for joining me. Pleasure. And uh, thanks for watching, everyone. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and stay fantastic. <laughs>